Hey guys, this is the Functions 2 lab, um, and I'll be going over question 1. Um, so for question 1, we were given a piece of code, um, and we are asked to um, analyze the code and see what the variable foo will be when the code is executed. Um, so when analyzing code, I like to make heaps of comments in so I kind of know what's going on. Um, so we'll start just um, putting in comments for these top two variables. So we know that these are going to be our global variables. Um, and we know that a is being equal to 5 and foo is being equal to 0. So now we can jump in here to the setup. Um, and we can see that a is now being set to 10. Um, so our global a is now equal to 10. Um, so now we can jump into draw. And we're calling bar of a. So we know that um, uh, this is going to be using, it's got no local instance, right? So we have to use that global instance. Um, and we know that that global instance a is equal to 10. So we're going to be doing uh, bar of 10. So now we come down here into bar. Um, and it's initializing a local instance of a. So this variable a is its local instance. And that means that this variable can only be used within the function. Uh, no other function can use that variable. So we know that now we have a global instance A and a local instance A. So we have to differentiate um, between those two. So I'll just make a note saying we've got this global that's equal to 10. And now we've got this local A that's being um, called with the global variable A. So it's just being equal to the same thing as the global A. So that means our local A is being equal to 10. And then we come into here and we're saying A is equal to 15. Um, so a function is always going to use its local instances before it uses a global instance. Um, so this function goes in and checks, do I have a local instance of A? And we do. So that's the variable it's referring to. So now the local a isn't 10 anymore, now it's 15. And then it's not returning anything to us, as we can see here with the void. Um, and you can see when we come into here, it says the value of parameter a is not actually really used. Um, so that's just saying that it's not returning anything, it's not actually really changing anything, because once we get to the end of this function, this local instance, we're no longer using it. It's like it's not even there. Um, so it's just chain, It's just creating this local instance, changing it, and then it's done. So this function doesn't really do anything. So we'll just make a note here and say, nothing really happens. So now we can come down here into um, this next line. And now we can see, again, we've got this, uh, we're referring to this variable a and there's no local instance of a, so we're using the global a, and it's going to be equal to bat of a, so bat of 10. So now we can come into here into our bat function, um, and again, it's creating this local instance of a. So when we call it, it's going to say, okay, I'm going to create this local variable, I'm going to call it a. So now let's differentiate and say we've got a global a, which is still equal to 10. And then we have a local A, um, which is being equal to whatever the global A is. So this local A is being created and it's gonna be set to 10. And then we can come down here and now we know, um, or we're referring to A again, and we're gonna update A, so A is equal to A plus one. Um, so again, functions always use their local instances before the global instance. So it says, okay, do I have a local instance of A? We do. So now A is going to be 11. And then this, or this function is actually returning something to us. So it's returning the value of 11 to us. So now we know that A is going to be equal to 11. Now we come down here into this. Um, next line of code, and we can see that foo is going to be equal to a. So there's no local instance of a within draw. So we're going to use our global instance, which is now equal to 11. 
Um, so I know this gets like a little bit confusing. So if you guys have any trouble kind of figuring out what's going on, you can always use the debugger. So I'll just come in here and I'll put breakpoints on all of our main lines. All right, and then I can run this. And it starts up here at this first line and we'll say, go to the next step. So now we've created this variable A, we've created this variable foo, A is equal to five, foo is equal to zero. Come into here, now A is gonna be equal to 10. And we can see up here it changed. Um, now we come down here, we're gonna call bar of 10, jump into that. And now we can see again, just like I said before, we've got two instances of A. We've got A, which is our local instance, and this dot A, which is our global instance. And you can see that that variable A is just kind of created. It's set to 15, and then we step out of it, and then it's gone. So again, nothing happens. We still have A, our global A, which is 10, and foo, which is zero. Um, and then we went to call bat A, stepped into the function bat. Um, now we've got A, which is 10, and this dot A, our global instance, which is also 10. Run through that. It returned to us A plus one. Um, so that was A, or that would, would have returned 11 to us. So now we jump back up into here. And if we step to the next line, we can see A gets changed to 11. And now we have foo, which is gonna be equal to A. So now if we run through this, we can see that a is just going to be updated again and again every time draw is run um, to whatever its value is plus one and then foo is going to equal that as well. So every time we go through it'll be 11, 12, and then we'll go through to 13, 14, so on and so forth. Um, so hopefully this helped um, and just keep practicing with it if you're a little bit confused.